everybody um before i start i just want to say if you can hear anything in the background i apologize um the heater is on it's freezing there's a middle of a freaking snowstorm so yeah um we have a new deck you already know i love ancient egypt so i just had to have this and uh before i get into this i will tell you um for some of you that have reached out on social media, please do not. Um, I deactivated my Facebook and my Instagram. I'm taking a social media break. So if you need to get a hold of me, please get a hold of me through email unless you have my number. Um, but preferably, please get a hold of me through email. Um, so this is the Dream of the Nile deck by Emma Zhang. Zhang. I hope I'm saying that right. Um... If not, I do deeply apologize to her. Um, so this is a first edition. This is so many of a batch that she is selling on Etsy and Kickstart. Um, and once it's done, it's run out, um, she will not be reprinting. So, and I saw this on a sponsored post on Instagram at, like, I think around December around the first week of December, and I got it on the second of this month. And shockingly enough, since I deleted social media, I've seen the Flower of Life pop up. Um, and it was funny because when I first opened the deck and I was cleaning it, uh, one of the cards that popped out was the Ace of Discs, or, you know, the Ace of um, Pentacles. It also had the flower of life on it so it was just funny that it just come full circle so the first card out and I asked spirit to channel something that is completely different since I've been looking at the flower of life I have been trying to realign and do it not and it's weird because before I started this reading I just heard what if your body is not an actual body like yeah, we're, we're touchable, we're tangible, you know, things like that. But what if your body actually emits through an aura or an energy spectrum that we cannot see that your body creates antimatter? So what if your body was a CERN machine that is being harvested in the long run? And what if our bodies are like Merkaba or dreidels um, that you could pack information in these dreidels, not just say our physical body, let's just say our universe, our matrix, is a dreidel that can be programmed with many other different universes that create one Merkaba. And then you house that like a seed of life or the flower of life because it has many circles. Now imagine that and pick out three points in that flower and you can move front, back, or up. And then you add six others, and it becomes a vortex. Now, of those, you have nine points. So add another nine points, and what do you have? You have a perfect pyramid like, that goes upwards. Everything is always up, whether you look here, 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 or here. You are always looking up. You are always moving up. Remember that. So, and the reason why this is kind of come full circle is funny because I don't know if I ever made a video on this, uh, what was it, I think like September of 2021, um, I ended up participating in like a group past life reading or whatnot with this lady and she had told me that in the past, like a past life, I actually worked with Nikola Tesla, I was his research assistant. And I knew him and I knew Thomas Edison. And that is partially why I begrudged Edison even in this lifetime. I think Edison was a total douchebag. And, and whatnot that took credit for his, not his inventions, but other people's inventions that worked for him that he just paid off and patented. Um, and basically silenced. So, yeah, so it kind of come full circle that this is happening and I've been watching videos on the Apophrica, I can't even say it, but basically it's the banned books from the Bible 
and it talks about how Adam and Eve actually didn't just have Seth, or excuse me, Cain and Abel, they had Seth, which who would become known as a Sethite, and um, they ended up going on to say that in these banned books that goes on besides Genesis that there was other four other beings that were in the garden had nothing to do with the serpent but there was kingdoms in Eden and Eden wasn't his name but it got me thinking what if Eden was Atlantis basically and most of the stories that we were told about the Bible were actually ancient stories from other civilizations so with that being said I've been researching and just going down that rabbit hole and it's funny that it's just coming full circle so it's funny so long story short that's what I've been up to in the last couple weeks that I have been off social media like so it's interesting that my mind has been philosophically and I've got into books about holistic medicine and herbology and that kind of came full circle again because before I got into archaeology and wanting to go to school for archaeology, I actually wanted to go in for holistic sports medicine. My mom had a reading in like 2012 where the reader had told my mom that eventually, if I chose to, I could go to China and study holistic medicine. And that path just never happened until I chose to. So honestly, I've been looking into um reiki using dragons and all that other stuff and history things like that learning from beings um so yeah okay so the first card that came out of this was the five of wands so there is this interesting enough because i did ask something that has never been channeled before and I honestly feel like I just keep seeing fighting, but it's not human fighting. It's not spiritual warfare because I don't condone spiritual warfare. And I know, and I'm going to tell you, if you are involved in spiritual warfare, immediately renounce it and give up. Because you are fighting an invisible war with yourself. You are fighting an invisible war with humanity and not with other beings. Everything that happens spiritually is caused by another human being ma malignant to another human being. So with that being said, if you were fighting spiritual warfare, most of it, you were fighting an invisible person behind the scenes. So you were re being remote viewed. I don't condone it. So immediately renounce it. Renounce its ties to you. And basically do everything and anything to, to remove it from your life. Because when you co-sign that you will bring it into your life if you know strife within yourself you will know strife outside of yourself as well so what you are is what you are you know what you bring in is what you feel inside so like i said that's not something strike it out of your vocabulary immediately you don't believe in spiritual warfare because you're not going to fight it everything is already won your mind just needs to catch up so reprogram your mind this almost feels like a war how do i want to say that this almost feels like a war within a universe it's like someone is trying to keep control here of all this that's in here, this space, that this receptacle holds the contents. And they're warring with another. And they're clashing. It almost feels like two universes are clashing with each other. One is about ready to set free the oppressor or the oppressed and bring them back into the fold. And they're acting like a savior, but really they're just as bad as the first. There's a clashing. I'm just seeing like a great wall fall. And the reason I'm saying that is there's a split. You know the stories of the Trojans, you know, being deceived by the Greeks with the Trojan horse. This is almost what that feels like. Is our basic 
embodiment of who we are is being harvested. We are the code. We have the Eight of Cups. I feel like in this case, we as a human collective have to put everything aside and choose whether or not we are going to be free or we're going to keep allowing the same things to happen. I feel like there's a mass awakening and a mass cleansing. I just heard purging, detoxing. But it's like the way it's happening is a very forced one. It's a rude awakening. There's a lot of disappointment and a lot of disagreement. And it's causing a lot of tension and a lot of ego popping up. There's a lot of people that are waking up and they're not realizing that they're having the same dreams. They're being programmed with the same dreams. And yet it's a wake up call because whatever it is. I don't know if you've ever seen, I think it's a show, it's called Tower, The Tower. And it's basically about these kids that are like whisked away because they have abilities or they're looked at as delinquents. And in reality, they go to this school, it's called Tower Prep. And they're harvested there for their abilities and what they can do. And the whole point of it is like there's a society that lies within it that seeks to control these students using students against each other and you know basically enhancing their inventions through these dark games basically So I am Googling it for you. It's called Tower Prep. This is what it is. It's still not even. So there's something about that coming through. So we have this, there, there is a massive cleansing and a massive, I just heard massive recall or total recall. Then we, we have the three, I think I need to shuffle the deck again. Because we had the seven and then eight and then we worked again towards that codes angel numbers there's something about a deliberacy of seeing the same angel numbers keep popping up and yet you guys are realizing like so many people are actually seeing these angel numbers now and people are like oh i'm going through this this x y and z and it's like it's almost like a deliberated um form of programming it's like, oh, you see this, now you're on like a total goose egg. It, it's almost like a scavenger hunt and you're still not seeing the numbers, like the correct numbers, the correct sequences. And it's like, some of you are seeing like 10, 10, 12, 12, 11, 11, 1, 1, 1, 3, 3, 3, so on and so forth. But yet you're not seeing the codes like 5, 9, 9, 7, 8, 6, 3. You know what I mean? You're not seeing, you're just seeing, you know, repetitive numbers or repeating mirrored numbers. But you're never seeing the actual sequences because you're plugged in over here on the operator board and you're not even supposed to be on this board. Like that's just one universe that you're plugging into and this the human universe, but you're not plugging into the universe that was actually created. Like this is the thing, the spirit is saying that there is something outside of spirit and this is why so many people who are coming through that come through that... They were like, oh, I, I was into tarot, I was into crystals, I was into the metaphysical, and then I renounced myself and went back to religion or anything like that. You should do the same. It's because they plug themselves out of that metaphysical reality because they realize, like, it's not for them. It's a trap and it's elusive and it's repetitive. It's a loop. It's being harvested. It's that, that Merkaba or whatnot that is being a, a harvest machine. 
the CERN machine that you your body is is being harvested in that Merkaba or that dreidel. So they want to plug back in, but they go back to something that's already known. What is outside of religion? What's outside of spirituality? This is what spirit is saying. There's something older than source that humans are failing to plug into, even though it's there. It's like when you see numbers that are not repetitive or mirrored, it's because that is awakening back again. So that's why it's how that show Tower Prepping is because there's like a group or a woman, like one of the main cast or whatever, her family designed like the AI that runs the school and they're going to upgrade it and kill it off. And so there she's, you know, the AI is basically helping them escape because she senses the trap to keep them stuck. This is what that is saying. There's like plug into the universe outside of the universe and back out through because you're not realizing God, source, whatever, the universe, mother cosmos, it's only one. It's just this here. It's within us. You're not plugging back into the actual origination of where everything comes from. We have the two of cups. So this is unifying and coming back into alignment, to the correct alignment and the correct portal. Coming back into wholeness or raising into awareness. And I was going to tell you, and this is funny that this freaking came out for me. So when you do the 369 method, is not talking about manifestation. It's actually in the, you know, the, the flower of life. It's actually like a, a passcode or a padlock, basically. And when you plug in the right sequence, it unlocks a doorway for you. Because it's, you're plugging into the right keys, the right seeds, right? And when you plug in and it creates the vortex, you, when I said you just go up, it's like you can go through a pyramid that's a huge funnel in the doorway. It almost looks like cobwebs. You see how that, that vanishing point just keeps going up? It's funny that that just came out. And that's what I was talking about. It was like, m imagine you're in a dreidel that's programmed and each part of that web, that sector can be programmed. And so there's many different universes or many different formats that you can plug in and out of you know just by basically going through the string you can basically manage a doorway that takes you to a whole different dimension or another dimension or a side of consciousness that that was never allowed to be in the beginning and it's like instead of going into one to the other why don't you just plug in and go through the main sector and go back to where it was needed to be originated back in because it's like we program ourselves to be motherboards. The thing is, the reason why we are failing to realize this is because we've been fed a lot of shit. We've been told to deny it. We've been told to revere stupid shit. Our souls are currency, so why are you selling yourself? Why are you selling your soul? With this six of wands energy, there's a deliberation. And I feel like someone is waiting for the right, the right, R-I-E, excuse me, R-I-T-E, right, right of passage. Someone's coming of age, there's a coming of age story here. And it's deliberately held back and yet someone does not realize that they are the right. You don't need a right performed. Whatever is being called to come back, originate back to source, basically to skip the chain of command and go straight there. 
is being asked to leave everything that you've ever wondered and ever thought that could possibly even be thought of and let it go. Someone's life is about to change and yet this is saying don't be stuck in it because this change because it's constant is going to completely demolish everything that's ever been known. What is coming? For you that don't co-sign this, I want to tell you there is this person, this alignment, this energy that is going to force a new, I'm hearing alignment. Why is this two of cups when it comes out? Who's aligning to whom or what? We have an awakening. We have the ace. We have the warrior fire. We have the apprentice. Now in these cards, someone is going from this, this apprentice, you're learning nothing. All of a sudden, you know everything. Then all of a sudden you go back to square one. And then boom. Once you go back to the origination point, you basically have a deliberation. It's like the mind is being expanded and you're being reborn. This awakening, and as you can see, there's so much light in this, but yet it almost feels like this hole. There, it's like the wrong key point. There, there's this awakening in the mind, there's light, but it's like, where's the light in the rest of the body? You know, where, where the mind is everything. Spirit is, I, I, I always, I always want to say spirit, but this is something far older than spirit, far older. And yet, do you see that there's, it almost feels like smoke and all this other shit that's hidden in this smoke or hidden in this veil. And it's like a parting of this coming through right of this rebirth this awakening is actually removing all of the plagued energy that's in the mind and basically through the body but you in order for you to come back to what this is this origination point you have to expand and pull all this in you have to live life so there's kundalini activation but this is not just kundalini activation, what you so think. This is an awakening of light that has never been seen. So for some of you, this energy is fast, especially with this, I don't even want to say a female, but womb, I'm just seeing womb, like the sacred life or the sacred lotus, this energy of rebirth and pulling through accepts that it's going to pull from the loins and it's going to go up. There, there's, a some, there's something about not picking a side between male and female. It's not heterosexual. It's not a hermaphrodite. It's nothing like that. It's something that we've never seen because this energy does not care whether or not you pick this side. It is only here to basically rise the vibration so from your body so you stop feeding this complex, this Merkaba, that is this machine that's harvesting this antimatter, this anti-life machine. So it's like it's giving you the energetic keys and the seeds that you need to bring in. So if anybody has been watching the Fibonacci or the Fibonacci sequences or seeing Pi, 
Um, I'm not talking like pi u e as in the pi, the number, the mathematical sequence. There is this energy that's coming through, even though they say math is the universal language, there's something about someone cracking the code. And I want to say someone is watching the moon and realizing the moon is actually a Fibonacci sequence. The eyes are Fibonacci sequences. Your very hand is a Fibonacci sequence. Your ears, your whole body is a Fibonacci sequence. So why aren't you grouping with other Fibonacci sequences in that energy? There's something about someone cracking that code. And there's something about someone reading, I heard American Gods, not the TV show that aired. Even though it was good, someone is reading the actual books, the series, and realizing how much of that teaching has has been around. Someone is actually looking into it. And I'm not saying I agree wholeheartedly with this, but Aleister Crowley's teachings, um, some of his ancient theories that he piggybacked off of are actually true. So someone is going to dive into Aleister Crowley's her hermetic teachings of mystery schools. Even though he went on towards that side, it's not light nor dark. However, I don't agree with some of the things that he says, and that's okay. So use your discernment and use your judgment. And this is why it's really important. So now we have, again, we were talking about the hermit, the hermetic. You're, you're diving in and you're going to do that alone. And it's going to be a long winding journey because you realize that you're not going to resonate with anybody and anything. And as bad as that is, you will walk a long winding road. You will probably get lost a few times along the way, but you will find yourself at the very end. So your journey is the journey of you becoming enlightened and awakening to something that is far greater than humans have ever thought. So on your journey, I wish you utmost protection, utmost love, and I hope that when you plug back into your origination point, you remember who you are and what you came to this planet to do, to seed. And with that being said, peace, love, and happiness. And I wish you the best of luck in any space-time continuum that you find yourself. So thank you so much for watching. Peace, love, and happiness.